with WWE seeing a couple departures and more. This is Wrestling Rambles. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Ahead of Monday Night Raw, Adam Pearce posted this video announcing that Bronson Reed was pulled from his match. Happy Labor Day, WWE Universe, and what a weekend it was. Bash in Berlin, NXT No Mercy last night, and we finish it off right tonight. Labor Day, Monday Night Raw from the Mile High City, Denver, Colorado. Plenty of good vibes to go around, but I'm here with a bit of bad breaking news. Bronson Reed, medically unable to compete tonight, has COVID out of the Intercontinental Championship contenders triple threat and who steps in? Well, I can assure you I'm working on that and you will have an answer tonight, 8, 7 central only on USA. Happy Labor Day. Bronson then responded writing, no man in WWE can stop me. So mother nature had to go and do them a favor. I'll recover and be back to destruction ASAP. Asked about being inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame for a second time, but as a part of the Brothers of Destruction with Kane, The Undertaker noted on his Six Feet Under podcast, yeah, I mean, I think there's people with less resumes that are in the Hall of Fame, but we're both in the Hall of Fame individually, so that's not something I'm losing much sleep about. I don't really want to give another speech, but to answer your question, yeah, I think the Brothers of Destruction being in the Hall of Fame, but again, I'm not going to lose much sleep. I guarantee you if it happens, my speech won't be nearly as long as it was when I went in on my own. Apparently, there was a meeting before Raw last night with Ringside News writing, according to PW Insider, a mandatory meeting took place backstage in Denver before Raw and the topic of discussion was quite noteworthy. They wanted to remind talent to watch their language. It was reported that the key takeaway from the meeting was that talent were reminded to avoid cursing on camera. While no specific examples were given, the overall message was clear, stay within the boundaries of TV. VPG programming. Since WWE and UFC merged under Endeavor, things have changed significantly. Triple H's creative leadership has given superstars new freedoms, boosting morale across the roster. This newfound energy could elevate promos, but unless they're as iconic as The Rock, it doesn't look like superstars will be getting the green light for much profanity. Prior to Joe Tessator's play-by-play -play commentary debut on Raw, Triple H could be seen talking to him backstage. Yeah, man. Sticking with Joe Tessitore, he reflected on his commentary debut for Raw, saying this in a WWE exclusive interview. How do I feel? Points to the fans. This is how I feel. You feel alive. You feel passion. And you feel intensity. You want to live in the red in life. That's what this is. Raw. Live in the red. This was an awesome night. I was very into them. It was a great reception. It meant a lot to me. I brought out the little kid in me tonight. I went and I grabbed a bunch of t-shirts and merchandise. I spread the love and I wanted to see a smile on these children's faces. From start to finish, I thought that what was thread this evening was very special and it was great to see it. Night one in the books, let's have many more. It's the kid who skipped school in 8th grade to go meet Big John Stud. It's the kid who was rooting against the faces to root for Paul Orndorff. That's the kid that you got tonight. I wasn't great tonight, I wasn't great tonight, but I was a passionate fan tonight. After Raw, Damian Priest would join Jey Uso and Rhea Ripley for a celebration.
Going over plans for house shows in WWE, Ringside News wrote that WWE's live event schedule has recently drawn attention due to a noticeable reduction in domestic house shows scheduled for the remainder of the year. According to Fightful Select, WWE appears to be making a drastic change in its approach to live events as 2024 comes to a close. As it stands, WWE is only two domestic house shows listed in the United States before Christmas, September 28th in Columbus, Georgia, and September 29th in in Huntsville, Alabama. This reduction marks a significant shift from previous years, where WWE regularly held numerous house shows across the country. One notable exception in the December 28th Orlando house show, which is set to compete directly with AEW's World End event in the same city. The annual holiday tour, known for being a major revenue generator for WWE, will continue as planned. However, WWE has notably increased its focus on international house shows, with legs scheduled in the UK in October and November, following previous tours in Europe, Japan, Mexico, and other international markets earlier this year. This trend of scaling back domestic house shows in favor of more international events has not gone unnoticed by WWE talent. While no official communication has been made to the roster about cutting back house shows, Several talents have reportedly expressed support for the reduced domestic schedule. Many performers are in favor of the lighter travel load, which provides them with more time at home and reduces the physical toll of a grueling travel schedule. WWE had previously considered scaling back house shows even before the pandemic, and this recent shift may signal a continuation of that strategy. The absence of any U.S. house shows for nearly 90 days after the Huntsville event underscores this change in approach. Wow. Accepting Rhea Ripley's challenge to defend her title, Liv Morgan said this in a video. What a way to celebrate 100 days as a women's world champion. And over you, by the way, I accept your challenge. This if you can make it. <laughs> Discussing the impact that CM Punk has had on the NXT roster, Shawn Michaels told Good Karma Wrestling, I think the fact that he supports us is huge. I think the great thing is, he's like a lot of us. He's come to a point in his career where he recognizes, you know, just how great his job has been and how great this industry has been to him. You do, you begin then to learn that you'd like to pass that on. So when he comes down, he's always very supportive, is helpful. But what I appreciate most about him is that he always checks with our coaches, checks with me again, making sure that we're all on a unified front, as you know, and pushing the same agenda or same direction. I think that's something that you can never beat. A guy that right now, in this moment, a living, breathing, you know, global superstar like CM Punk, coming back and interacting with young talent because he's everything they want to be. So that's always going to be a positive because they see me every day. I am so not special around here. It doesn't even matter. So it's very beneficial for us when a CM Punk or a Cody Rhodes or a Drew McIntyre or a Seth Rollins comes down here and visits us because now they can talk to the guys that are firsthand doing it and letting them know what it is they need to experience. Mentioning his exit from WWE, AEW star Ricochet told the Ringer Wrestling Show, Yeah, I think going into it, I think I knew how my time on WWE TV would end, and even later, me and Triple H had a little talk, and he was just like, any time, whatever, because I just hadn't re-signed, and it was kind of like, my last time there before the time ran up. I think they knew I just wasn't going to do it, so I think they were just trying to give me a good out that made me, you know, something that was open ended what's gonna happen so i think they wanted to leave it that way but i think they knew that wasn't gonna happen Asked about his final years in WWE and if they were frustrating, Ricochet noted on the Masked Man show, Honestly, you can place blame anywhere, but I just blame myself. Everyone can blame who they want to blame. 
Everybody can blame anybody, but I just blame myself because that's the only person that I can blame because that's all you can do. Obviously, I didn't do something. I don't know what it was. For me, frustrating is maybe not the word because my last couple years, I met my future wife there. I made mad connections. The locker room was always awesome. As far as creatively, I mean, yeah, there would have been more I would have liked to do just again, mostly for the fans that want to see me do stuff, not even for me, but it's more frustrating for the fans who want to see me go out there and actually do something of some substance. I was out there a lot. I was on television a lot. I was actually used a lot, but the quality of what I was doing specifically wasn't there. It was a lot of quantity of ricochet, but the quality of what he was getting just wasn't what I wanted, and that's okay. That's just how it falls. I can only blame myself. I can't blame anybody else. I just can't. But it wasn't really frustrating because I had a lot of good times there still. But was there more? more I wanted to do? Absolutely. But man, I can't say it was frustrating because I still had a good time. Talking about the debut of the Wyatt Six Faction in WWE, where Bo Dallas and his group are paying tribute to his brother, the late Bray Wyatt. Wyatt's former partner and former WWE ring announcer, Jojo Offerman, said this about it, telling Southern Wrestling Autographs, I'm very happy that Bo has that opportunity to kind of carry on his legacy, but it's really hard a lot of the times because it's like a trigger for me. And I've had to put my phone down and completely not watch it at points. And that goes back to even Samantha Irvin or Liv Morgan. I'd be like, hey, can you warn me if it's something today? Because I'll stay off social media because I remember his, the debut. I didn't even know it was happening and his music hit and I straight up could not stop crying all night. It was full on panic attacks for me. I've had to kind of make it work in the best way I can because I do support it. After being involved in a domestic violence incident with her husband, Artem Chikvintsev, Nikki Bella could be looking to get a divorce, as Ringside News wrote that according to TMZ, Nikki has been actively searching for divorce lawyers since Friday with the intention of filing for divorce. This decision comes just a day after the incident, resulting in physical injuries that led to his arrest on felony domestic violence charges. Nikki has not been wearing her wedding ring since the incident, including when she hosted the Chestnut Kobayashi Hot Dog Eating contest in Las Vegas over the weekend. Sources also indicate that Artem is no longer staying at the family home and is currently living with a friend while Nikki remains in the house with their four-year-old son Mateo. The incident leading to Artem's arrest occurred last Thursday when he called paramedics to request medical assistance for the alleged victim. However, he later canceled the request but authorities still responded to the call. Upon arrival, officers reportedly observed visible injuries which led to Artem's arrest for felony corporal injury to his spouse or cohabitant. He was released on bail shortly after his arrest. Nikki and Artem first met in 2017 when they were paired together on season 28 of Dancing with the Stars. Their romantic relationship began several years later after Nikki's high-profile split with John Cena. The company welcomed their son Mateo in 2020 and tied the knot in 2022, just days before celebrating their second wedding anniversary. Touching on a possible return to WWE, TNA World Champion Nick Nemeth said this to the Battleground Podcast. NXT, I have no interest. I've done that already. What's the payoff? I don't become NXT champion like I already did two years ago. If there's a payoff for the company to have like, hey, we're bringing in our world champ and it's going to be something special. I am all years to help both companies make it just one notch bigger and better. There really is something that like as the world champ, I could show up and it would be a big deal I hope. But right now, for me, unfinished business in NXT or something that would just me showing up to do something. I don't know what the payoff would be, but also someone on Monday Night Raw or SmackDown making a challenge, that would be different. Someone I haven't worked with. I was in NXT for a while. I was champion and I worked with Braun Breaker, which man, the kid's freaking awesome. But I don't know what I can accomplish there. If there is any algorithm or business paperwork or data that says, hey, this is going to be huge if you show up, let's make it happen. One 100% I will be there, but also the more I talk down and say I'm not going, it makes it a bigger surprise when I show up.
revealing that she signed a contract with WWE, former star for the company, Victoria said this on X. Guys, I'm so sorry that I didn't announce my special announcement, but guess what? I'm gonna cry, hold on. Uh, I got offered a Legends contract, which is called Nostalgic contract now, um, and I'm so ecstatic. I'll be in the videos, I'll have new action figures, you guys. I'm WWE family, I love you. Thank you so much for just the love and just support and everything like that. I am so freaking ecstatic, you guys have no idea. I'm trying not to cry so my makeup doesn't smear. I'm at OVW show, back in my home. Right back at home, OVW, babe. But um, can you believe that? You guys, I have a big announcement. Guess who got a Legends contract, a nostalgic contract? Woohoo! Victoria! Woo! Woo! Yeah. 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 You deserve it! I'll be in the video games again. Oh my god, I'm so excited. <laughs> Yay! Recently, it was noticed that Raw superstar Odyssey Jones had been removed from the WWE roster page. Now, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful has noted that those we've spoken to say that Odyssey Jones is not at WWE Raw as of now. Odyssey Jones is no longer listed on the WWE roster page. I got a message yesterday saying I should ask if there was a change in his status, but I haven't heard back from WWE yet. Talent I've talked to have been surprised by him being off the roster page. More details would be later provided by Fightful Fightful, who said Odyssey Jones was removed from WWE television when domestic violence allegations came to WWE's attention. Brian Alvarez of the Wrestling Observer then said, There has not been a press release or anything like that, but I've been told Odyssey Jones is fired. There are rumors online, also from Fightful, that it was a domestic violence allegation. Apparently, no arrests at this point, but I was told fired. So, that's it for Odyssey Jones. Mentioning a departure from WWE, Ringside News wrote that another significant departure has occurred within WWE as the company continues to undergo changes following the TKO merger. According to the latest Wrestling Observer Daily Update, Michelle Carlucci, WWE's Director of Production and Travel, has been let go from the company. Carlucci's departure marks the end of a long and dedicated career with WWE, having been with the company since 1988. Over the years, she held various roles, including a 14 year stint as director of the freelance crew, travel, and special projects before taking on her most recent position as director of production travel in 2019. The report indicates that Carlucci was let go on Friday, continuing the trend of personnel changes and departures within WWE since the merger with TKO Group Holdings. Her departure is particularly notable due to her extensive tenure with the company, spanning over three decades. Carlucci's contributions to WWE over the years have been significant significant, particularly in managing the complex logistics of production travel for the company's numerous live events and productions. Her departure is a reminder of the ongoing restructuring and changes taking place within WWE as it adapts to the new corporate landscape post-merger. Another exit from WWE was seen as Ringside News also said that, according to a report by PW Insider, WWE's longtime lead production designer Jason Robinson is said to be leaving the company. He may have already concluded his tenure or be wrapping up his responsibilities following this past weekend's Bash and Berlin premium live event. Robinson, who had been with WWE for over 23 years, was highly regarded and known for his exceptional talent. Some saw him as a Kevin Dunn guy as well. His departure has surprised many backstage as he was considered a crucial figure in shaping the company's product design. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I will see y'all later.